enrichment is not something that you do with just the smart kids. For this video, I'm going to make a special shout out to Eric Jensen, who wrote this book, Enriching the Brain. It, he starts his book with the thesis, the human brain is a dynamic and changing organ, and the way we teach, parent, or run our schools can and does dramatically change the brain of over 90% of all learners. Here's the thing, the science is in. The brain does not finish learning and growing ever. Neuroplasticity is now unanimously accepted by science. Learning happens when the brain is challenged to work and practice something new, novel, and complex. The challenge for educators is that a major enemy to learning is stress. So being asked to do something that you cannot do causes stress. Add in a time limit and an evaluation at the end and you have compounded the problem. I am not suggesting that deadlines and tests are bad, but asking students to be evaluated on skills or knowledge that they don't have or can't do is not helping learning. So you have to push, but not too hard and not too fast. It's a very delicate balance. It becomes the job of the educator to create opportunities for students to engage in difficult tasks and practice new skills that are just outside of the range of their current ability. You have to be pushed in order to learn. If you're pushed too hard, it shuts the learning down. Everyone needs enrichment in order to grow their cognitive ability and knowledge. We must stop thinking about difficult learning as something that only the bright kids are going to engage in. What we do have to be aware of is that the mental reach of student number one is going to be different than that of student number two. I like to think of it like this. You have to push kids, but pushing them off a cliff without any background, that's not fair. What you are doing and what you must do is push them up a mountain against their will sometimes, particularly with the teenage crowd. But the push has to come one step at a time. This is not an easy task, I understand that. It requires knowing your students and also really understanding the task that you've put in front of them. I'll talk about scaffolding in another video and ways that you can provide stepping stones within your assignments, but for today, I'd like to suggest that one solution is choice. In my experience, children are pretty good at choosing learning opportunities that are right for them. Rarely, when I provide choice, do my students choose the easy task just to get a good grade. When they do, if I'm paying attention, I can coach them along and push them to try a little bit harder. What choice does is that it provides students the ability to self-differentiate. We talk about this word a lot in education, differentiation. Modifying assignments and learning opportunities for individual learners. This is a great idea for learning and just about totally impractical in day-to-day -day practice. So why not let students do it for themselves? One of my favorite ways of doing this is with show what you know. In this assignment, I ask students to show me what they have learned in any way they choose. I found this image a bunch of years ago and I always use it when introducing this assignment. This process will be a little bit wild and wonderful, but I have never done it with students without getting some pretty great learning and production. The trick here, from the teacher's point of view, I think is documentation. When I'm organized, I have a blank table like this one, all ready to go. When I'm not, it ends up being just a piece of scrap paper that I grab from the recycling bin and write on the back. It doesn't really matter. Either way, the result ends up looking a bit like this. This helps me keep track of where students are at in the process. I can easily scan the column down and see if I haven't checked in with a particular student that day. And it also provides golden evidence when it comes time to evaluate or self-reflect. For the less courageous, choice can have more structure than that. But even an assignment like this one has many entry points for students. Your job is to keep track of progress and make sure that you're having the conversations with students about pushing themselves out of their comfort zone just a little bit. You're not going to get it right every time, or even most of the time, but I think just talking to students about learning, how learning happens, reminding them that they're all smart and capable of learning and improving is more than half the battle. <laughs> 